and uh, uh, before we begin with the lecture i will uh, uh, request you to do one thing which will be taken as your attendance so each one of you should write down your roll number in the chat box your full roll number like cuhp uh, 17 or 18 whatever and uh, pg and blah blah so this uh, will be a sort of uh, uh, attendance record and, and uh, it will be kept for future use fine so now uh, let us begin with the class so yesterday we were discussing about uh, uh, lattice which is just a periodic array of points and uh, uh, how a structure can be represented with the help of more abstract periodic array of points rather than representing the whole structure we can represent and then instead of representing the whole lattice which will be extending all the way to infinity uh, it will be a good idea to actually represent a unit cell which is uh, some smaller unit uh, or some finite size unit rather we should say uh, which can be repeated in three dimensions and uh, uh, is capable of producing the whole infinite size lattice now the question is okay if you have a given you have been given a lattice for example in this uh, diagram you are able to see some white dots so although they are uh, appearing to be of finite size or very tiny circles but theoretically they are just like points but since we can't view a point zero dimensional uh, object or a point we can't view it because it will be too tiny to be uh, visible to us so that is why we practically draw some finite size points so this is a lattice uh, now the question is okay what can be the uh, possible unit cell for uh, this given lattice so if you remove all these lines just imagine because uh, i forgot to do that in this uh, slide let us remove all these lines which have been drawn so it will be just a uh, periodic array of points um, and uh, separation is such that along the horizontal direction they have some separation something like say a along vertical direction the separation is something like b a is greater than b of course oh still students are joining so please uh, i request you all to kindly join uh, timely because this will be disrupting the lecture in between uh, uh, <clears throat> okay so uh, who joined recently i forgot the name but yes uh, please write down your own number in the chat box for the record so that we got to know that you attend the class okay fine so now just periodic arrangement of the points according to some uh, pattern now uh, there are different ways of choosing unit cells say this is one way where we have chosen unit cell to be uh, rectangle with the or uh, the lattice points being at the corners of the rectangle but uh, nobody limits you to choose only this as a unit cell you may have chosen this unit cell which will be sort of a parallelogram with the lattice po points being on the corner still uh, and uh, this parallelogram also if repeated in the produce the whole lattice same is the case with this rectangle so if this rectangle is repeated indefinitely in two dimensions then this will be capable of producing the whole lattice so that is the basic defining characteristic or uh, uh, definition for a unit cell but again uh, these two unit cells we can say this rectangle and this parallelogram this smaller parallelogram <laughs> these two are uh, uh, you could say the smallest size unit cells because you can't have a unit cell smaller than that that you can try uh, and you won't be able to find out a unit cell smaller than that but then this is not a restriction that you should always choose the smallest like this this bigger parallelogram 
uh, now in this case you would say okay if this is a parallelogram then if this is repeated with the lattice points being only at its corners this can't produce the whole lattice yes of course but in this case or in this bigger parallelogram we are saying okay it's not the unit cell containing lattice points only at the corners but it also has uh, lattice points sitting on the center of the uh, edges so two, two edges and some as a whole is repeated shall definitely be capable of producing the whole lattice so that is what uh, you should be uh, noting carefully that unit cell need not be the smallest one i mean you can choose unit cell in any uh, possible way and uh, this this is uh, another choice of uh, choosing a unit cell for a given lattice so so if you go to the heading of this slide unit cell can be chosen in infinite possible ways oh then you should be a little uh, surprised or confused uh, how is it possible to get infinite many choices by different permutations and combinations and uh, there is another uh, very interesting thing regarding unit cells this has been taken from ashcroft marmin so this is also showing some uh, this this slide is showing or this figure uh, is showing periodic array of points so these black dots are representing lattice now unit cell the lattice is same in all these four figures so um, top two and bottom two these two have exactly same lattice but now unit cells have been chosen to be in different ways so in first case it is a parallelogram like this program like this so there's another thing uh, or a conventional notion in our mind that okay a unit cell should be the one in which lattice points are always on the corners no that's not a mandatory thing so you can have lattice point somewhere in between the uh, unit cell itself and no point at all on the corners so uh, remove that conventional or wrong notion in your mind and there is another thing that okay the the sides of unit cell must be straight line that is another conventional or uh, rather we never think about it that okay there can be any other option to choose a unit cell but yes this is so sides being spaces being represented with the help of some very unconventional kind of unit cell that way you should uh, uh, find many possibilities to choose unit cell so this is another i mean here they have chosen unit cell to be looking like a more complex but more fancy you could say uh, so that is also of course possibility by uh, how we can choose a unit cell so if this structure even if this structure is repeated it will be capable of producing the whole lattice so the moral of the story is that the unit cell can be chosen in any possible ways there are finite many choices since uh, say uh, bottom right figure uh, so because uh, we don't go with this because uh, uh, representing such boundaries of unit cell mathematically is very very complicated so to write a straight line is rather simple we can use something like mx plus c or we can represent that with the help of simple vectors right but in case of uh, this kind of complex unit cell shapes your uh, life will become very very complicated mathematically so we avoid uh, getting into that kind of business so fine finally what is this or any possible ways or uh, and indeed there are infinite many choices for doing that well then while while choosing unit cell we have, we keep some uh, practicalities in our mind and those practicalities are something like okay it should be simplest uh, simplest in terms of uh, uh, the shape of the unit cell we can say smallest if we can afford and uh, if possible we should prefer to take right angles in that case vectors will be further simple for example in case of cubic unit cell the vectors are rather simple you can write down the vectors which are mutually perpendicular to each other by something like a i cap plus say uh, a j cap plus a k cap means 
one vector along uh, i direction or x direction other vector of same length along y direction other vector of same length along z direction but then we will be realizing uh, that if we go with the non perpendicular cases then the vectors will be little complicated so that will be following in the next slides third practicality which you should keep in mind is that cell shape should be consistent with the symmetry we should prefer that uh, the symmetry of the that is should be uh, as close to the symmetry of the unit cell uh, as we prefer that this that is uh, doesn't have a four fold uh, rotational symmetry but it it has a two fold rotational symmetry so we should try to choose a cell which is something like that only i mean uh, this is a this rather we would say is sort of rectangular lattice so we may choose this as the suitable choice because this choice has similar symmetry element and then the, uh, as that of the lattice so fine this is the possible choices of a unit cell so but uh, Uh, there can be any other ways also anyway so now let us come to three dimensional structures okay in, in this slide let me uh, 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 tell you one important interesting thing that these shells which are these unit cells which are smallest in size are called primitive cells uh, and uh, these cells which are bigger than the primitive cells are non primitive or we can say conventional why they are conventional because they are preferred conventionally in terms of uh, maybe their symmetry or, or something like that i mean they have
ये जो डिस्ट लगो कैसे हैं सब Okay, hello. I hope I had lost connection. I don't know when I lost the connection. I was presenting and presenting. Can you please uh, uh, let me know where, where, where I could 
still online students okay now i mean where did i leave the meeting i mean where i had lost the connection or should i begin from the starting yes i need your feedback primitive and non primitive cell was clear to you so uh, okay this uh, 3d lattice uh huh okay so okay let me share the slide so in this case i would request guys because i was presenting i thought okay everything is going fine then i realized oh the screen has gone okay anyway <clears throat> let me uh, share the ppt first so uh, powerpoint slide show is here okay so uh, had i discussed this uh, had i discussed this that uh, okay how to choose a, a unit cell was this clear okay very good so now this one i talked i mean uh, primitive and non primitive unit cells that also is done i think thing right that uh, uh, in case of three dimensional lattices how we can choose the unit cell is this the correct point to restart okay fine so now uh, here what we were discussing is that that uh, okay in case of simple in case of uh, three dimensional lattices how we can uh, represent the unit cell or how we can choose the unit cell so in simple cubic case uh, or uh, what is the simple cubic lattice let us first forget about and assume that we have a lattice of points where the points along say x direction are repeated like okay if there is one lattice point at 0 0 then if you go along x direction there is another point at say a distance second point at 2a distance third point at 3a distance and so on fine and uh, similarly when you repeat along y direction you have one point along a direction uh, a 2a distance and so on and similarly same rule is repeated along the z direction in this way this set of points let us uh, remove these lines first now if you have been asked to choose the unit cell for such a lattice the best or simplest way should be to choose the unit cell made up of the lattice vectors made up of like this say i mean a1 vector suppose first lattice vector will be a x cap second vector may be a y cap and third vector will be a z cap that's the simplest choice of the lattice vectors now uh, second case is of uh, uh, say b c c body centered cubic so in this case suppose along with uh, or cubic uh, this this type of lattice there is additional lattice points in this lattice i mean suppose there are additional lattice points in simple cubic lattice and what are the location of those points suppose they have they are uh, located on the center of the cube so in this case what should be the lattice vectors for the unit cell so if i choose the lattice vectors to be like this the exactly one for uh, simple cubic because you may say okay this is also a cube this is also a cube so the vectors representing a cube should be exactly the same but in that way we will get only this type of lattice points we will miss this to get the central point into the uh, picture what we should choose is okay let us choose uh, one lattice vector or a1 vector to be a x cap a2 vector to be a y cap and third vector a3 we will choose to be like this which is something like okay a by 2 x cap plus y cap plus z cap now i am sure intuitively you can get an idea why we chose this vector to be of this particular form because the coordinates of end point i hope you are uh, you have done this in coordinate geometry two point formula so one point is suppose 0 0 second point is at half 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 so what would be the uh, the vector for uh, look like this a by 2 x cap y cap 
x cap plus y cap plus z cap. So that's the one choice uh, for choosing the uh, primitive cell for a body centered cubic lattice. So how would that cube, that uh, unit cell look like? This is the, the primitive cell won't be looking like this. This I have shown in the next slide. So you have to join these vectors and make a parallelopiped out of them. So this is A1, A2, A3. Join them and make a parallelopiped out of that. Because if you have any three vectors, you can always make a parallelopiped, parallelopiped out of them. So that will be the shape of the primitive. That is clear. But this is not the only choice. You may uh, may like to uh, write the primitive vectors for a BCC cell with the help of this arrangement. So this is same BCC lattice. Now along with this uh, part of the lattice, we are representing these additional points which actually belong to the nearby cubes. So this belongs to the cube sitting in the right side. This belongs to the cube sitting in the front side. This belongs to the cube sitting in the downside of this reference cube. So if A2 vector, A3 vector, then the, the, the vectors will look like this, A by 2. Now you can find out what will be the coordinates of these vectors, right? So let you assume this to be 0, 0, 0. So uh, in one case, it will be A by 2, Y cap plus Z cap minus X cap in one case. Second case will be this and third case will be this. I mean, you can work it out yourself. I leave it to you. Uh, um, now, if we look this set of lattice vectors, then mathematically they are, what do you think? I mean, is this set uh, better or this set better mathematically? So this vectors with the help of a three cross three matrix, then this matrix has some symmetry, isn't it? So mathematically dealing with such kind of symmetric matrices may be a convenient task and this may reduce our efforts at certain uh, uh, situations. So that is why we may prefer to take this as a primitive cell for doing calculations uh, related to a body centered cubic lattice. But if we have to represent or see the <coughs> unit cell in terms of the symmetry of the lattice or the symmetry operations of the lattice, then we, 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 would, we would prefer to take the Q.
some network issue. So these are unfortunately the practical problems. Uh, I hope I'm audible now. Am I yes, audible? Sir. Okay, good. Uh, uh, I hope uh, we were discussing this. Uh, this this uh, FCC case was done. The FCC case was done, right? Okay, BCC completed. FCC we have to discuss. Fine. So uh, the same way we did uh, uh, obtain lattice vectors for a BCC case, uh, and uh, I did uh, tell you that okay, this set of convenience in terms of uh, symmetry of the components. Uh, so this would be probably a better choice uh, to mathematically talk about uh, BCC cell. Similarly, for FCC lattice, you may have n number of choices of lattice vectors, but the best one, uh, which has a mathematical symmetry, uh, can be this one. So you can get this one as the set of lattice vectors for face center cubic cell or face center cubic lattice. Uh, this question I already answered for you that okay, this set of vectors cannot produce Sir, FCC or BCC because if we shall get a simple cubic lattice. Sorry. Oh, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. I'm sorry. I have to share it again. Okay, fine. Okay, now it should be there. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So, in case this kind of blunders do remind me timely. Okay, anyway. So, this we had already discussed, right? So, that is your FCC thing that um, uh, you can find out that these, these uh, lattice vectors for uh, primitive cell of FCC, uh, sorry, BCC choice because it has a mathematical symmetry. If you write down the matrix uh, corresponding to lattice vectors, uh, of uh, uh, this one with this this type of vectors that would look more symmetric fine similarly the uh, lattice vectors for a uh, fcc uh, should be uh, there can be n, n number of choices so this one will be a better one because this has a mathematical symmetry the matrix elements will look more symmetric in this case so that is what i was talking I mean, uh, okay, can this set of uh, vectors represent FCC or BCC uh, lattice? No, because if you, what will happen that uh, they will be generating only a simple cubic lattice because they, they, this, this rule won't be able to generate the lattice points uh, in say center of the cube or uh, on the face centers. Because what does this rule mean is that, okay, you have one vector, say A1 is equal to AX cap, means if you go along X direction, the lattice points are appearing after a distance A from each other. So you have a point at 0, 0, 0, 0, sorry, A0, 0, 0, and then 2A0, 0, 0, 3A0, 0, 0, and so on. Similarly, along uh, Y direction, you have lattice points, say, uh, 0, A0, uh, 0 to a 0 and so on so this way what you shall be getting is a simple cubic lattice so these vectors are not sufficient to represent FCC or BCC so that is why you have to choose these vectors only fine <coughs> so here is uh, this one what you call primitive and uh, con conventional cell so okay this is the unit cell which is uh, representing uh, some lattice so can you just have a look at this and uh, let me know that uh, uh, which particular lattice is it? Is it uh, BCC or FCC lattice? FCC. Yeah, this one is uh, FCC and this one is BCC. And this outer cube shows the conventional cell for a FCC lattice. And this inner shell, inner cell shows the primitive cell for a FCC lattice. So this is outer shell is a outer cell is a conventional cell for FCC and inner cell is the primitive cell for FCC. So if you see outer cell, this contains more than one lattice point. You have one effective lattice point out of the lattice point sitting at the corners of the cube and uh, uh, three lattice points coming from the of the cube. So all together in FCC lattice, 
there are four lattice points per conventional unit cell i repeat there are four lattice points per conventional unit cell whereas if we take the corresponding primitive cell it will have only one lattice point because here the lattice point is only on the corner of this shape of this is a parallelopiped so there will be one lattice point on uh, each corner so there are total eight corners you will say okay in this case it won't be equally coming but still um, if one portion is more to one corner opposite corner will balance it and anyhow we are talking of a point right so uh, effectively what we will be finding is that there is only one lattice point per primitive cell so that is the fundamental defining definition means you have only one lattice point in the one Uh, unit cell so that cell is called the primitive one so, so this is called primitive to engagement so conventional cell will have two lattice points per unit cell and primitive cell will have only one lattice point per uh, unit cell then there was Uh, there is a question that okay how we can choose the primitive cell the question is how we can choose the primitive cell so there is again not a unique choice to represent a primitive cell this is one way again from this diagram we can get an idea so all of these cells are primitive cells because all of them are effectively Uh, proposed the method to get a primitive cell how we can get a primitive cell let us first understand this with the help of this two dimensional arrangement this all is given in uh, uh, this ashcroft marmin so you can uh, refer to that book for more examples so this is a two dimensional lattice suppose and we have to construct its uh, primitive cell and uh, rather i should say the beginner seeds primitive cell so how we can do that is we choose one lattice point uh any one lattice point because all lattice points are identical and then connect it to the nearby lattice points say this one i connect it to this one i connected it to this one no problem with that so connect it to all nearby points and then you draw perpendicular bisectors to the line connecting two lattice points so a line connecting these two lattice points has a by perpendicular bisector this one uh, and for this one this is the perpendicular bisector for this two for these two points this is the perpendicular bisector for these two points this is the perpendicular bisector and so on and the innermost cell which is obtained out of all those perpendicular bisectors is called the so these outer one so their perpendicular bisectors will be lying somewhere here outside this innermost region that is why connecting the points which are far away from this point doesn't make any sense because we are only concerned with the innermost cell and that is how we can construct the wigner seed cell for a uh, uh, any any lattice so this is the simplest case of 2d similarly if you try to draw wigner seed cell for say a three dimensional body centered cubic lattice that cell would look like this so here we don't only draw perpendicular bisecting lines now we are dealing three dimension uh, i mean perpendicularly bisecting planes so you are taking central point or the point sitting in the center of the cube as the reference point then these all are the red lattice points i connect this drew a plane uh, of course this plane will be infinite size perpendicularly bisecting plane then uh, you have some cube sitting here as well uh, one point sitting here in the upper cube so when you will be drawing a bisector plane that will be this plane actually this uh, this plane uh you should say but which plane is this one uh so if this is say x this is y right similarly you draw all the planes and the shape which you get out of all the innermost 
uh, bisector planes will be looking something like this. So this is the Wigner seeds primitive cell for a BCC lattice. Similarly, you can get Wigner seeds primitive cell for a FCC lattice like this. And these primitive cells are very uh, Wigner seeds primitive cells are very useful, uh, specifically when we are dealing with the reciprocal lattice. Whenever uh, I don't know whether you have done a course on electronic structure calculation. Earlier batches had been given a course on uh, doing electrons, electronic standard codes. So there you come across the Brillouin zone for a particular lattice. So there you see that okay, if you have a FCC structure, then the reciprocal lattice for that is a BCC cell, and the Brillouin zone looks like this. So we will be doing Brillouin zones in coming lectures. So don't worry if you have not done. But okay, I mean, these shapes should remain in your mind so that whenever we do that in those classes, you should be able to recall these. So this is Wigner seed cell. Is this clear? Any, any query from this part? Yes, any query, please. So is it different from the primitive cell that we have studied earlier? This Wigner seed cell. Sorry? What is your question? Uh, the Wigner seed cell, uh, primitive cell that we have studied now, is it different from the earlier primitive uh, cells? Yes, this is different, of course. <clears throat> and uh, as I told, the, that choosing a primitive cell is not a unique choice. You can choose it in any n number of ways. So this is one one of the ways to choose a primitive cell. And the speciality of Wigner seed primitive cell is that the lattice point is always lying on the center of the Wigner <laughs> seed cell. Why? Because we are starting to this point. So of course it is going, it is always going to be on the center of the primitive cell. Yes, Himanshu, okay. is it clear? Yes, okay. Or any question further? No. Sir. Okay, any, any other question from anyone else? Did you get the idea of primitive cell properly or what is Wigner seed cell? Okay, Himanshu, if you don't have any question, please mute your mic. Fine, so um, this is a very important and interesting example of uh, uh, to what all arrangement of points can be called. Uh, Bravais lattice. Now there is something called Bravais lattice. There is something called a lattice. So lattice is what? It is a periodic array of points. Lattice is a periodic array of points. So if you look at the left hand side figure here, this one, uh, can we call this a lattice? Let us forget about black and uh, sorry, let us forget about this blue and red color of the dot. If we just all of them it's not a bravais lattice now you will say oh this is so there is a difference between being a lattice and being a bravais lattice yes so bravais lattice lattice is any periodic array of points following that pattern of specific periodicity so this is a called very well known lattice called honeycomb lattice uh, but this is not a Bravais lattice because for Bravais lattice that should satisfy uh, translational symmetry means uh, if all the lattice points uh, all the lattice points should be identical in Bravais lattice all the lattice points of each point is exactly the same but in general in lattice it, it is not necessarily the case so that is something interesting which you should note so this is a honeycomb lattice and uh, it, it seems to be looking like uh, hexagonal in arrangement but here you will see that each point is not having exactly the same environment now again you may say why so because uh, if i look at any point here sorry if i look at any point here it is surrounded by three points separated by same distance maybe say a a point then also it is uh, surrounded by three points all are separated by a distance a so 
can we call this as an identical uh, surrounding no because the orientation of the points is not same although each lattice point is surrounded by three lattice points which are separated by a distance a a a from that point whether it is black or sorry whether it is blue or red but the orientation is not same so for example if you go to the blue point then there is a, a lattice point to the left side at the upside uh, in such an orientation but in case of red we have a lattice point not on to the left but on to the right so the orientational symmetry is not the same so that is why the two points are symmetrically different so that is why this this lattice which is dimensional crystal structure then does it mean it doesn't have any bravais lattice so uh, the question is very relevant and uh, very genuine that i mean graphene which is a two dimensional crystal structure and uh, where carbon atoms are arranged in a honeycomb lattice then should we say that okay since honeycomb lattice honeycomb lattice is not a uh, bravais lattice so this graphene also doesn't have a uh bravais lattice corresponding to it no graphene do have a uh, bravais lattice corresponding to it in deed the, the honeycomb lattice itself has a bravais lattice corresponding to it how we can get that one is that we will choose this as a set of bases i mean let us forget about one set of points in this whole diagram Uh, and uh, let us only look at the blue dots let us only look at the blue dots so all those blue dots indeed constitute a bravais lattice that's something interesting so i mean or if you take either all blue dots or all red dots they will constitute a bravais lattice if you try to see at say blue dots only then you will see okay if you go along this direction the dots are repeating after certain specific distance and each blue dot has exactly the same environment around it so corresponding to honeycomb lattice there is a bravais lattice made up of only one of the points i mean these two so what we can say is okay if this is a two dimensional uh, crystal in that case say graphene let us take the case of graphene then what will be the lattice lattice will be or the bravais lattice corresponding to that that uh, graphene structure will be arrangement of of say one set of points or one set of atoms and second set of atoms can be taken to be like bases so now that is where we can get an idea of bases so what is bases is the structure which should be associated with each lattice point to get that periodic uh arrangement the to, to get that periodic uh structure as a whole for example in case of crystal we will say that okay we have a lattice then what set of atoms we should associate with the lattice points to get the whole crystal structure means if you take lattice plus basis basis means uh, arrangement of points uh, arrangement of atoms associated with each lattice point to get the crystal structure so that is called basis so in case of graphene the bravais lattice is two dimensional hexagonal lattice so this type of lattice we can call the bravais lattice for graphene or honeycomb lattice with each lattice point associated with two atoms in case of graphene so one atom to be placed exactly at the lattice point other atom to be placed in reference to lattice point according to this rule so you can locate if one atom is placed here some other atom will be placed somewhere here so if you repeat that way the whole basis on your lattice points you will get the full honeycomb lattice so i hope this 
should answer your uh, doubts if there are any regarding what is a brevis lattice and what is not a brevis lattice and what is the difference between honeycomb lattice and uh, two dimensional hexagonal brevis lattice so that is the difference so this is how you can choose so this is a honeycomb lattice how we can choose the primitive cell for a honeycomb lattice this is one way to choose primitive cell so if i take this as the primitive cell if, if this primitive cell is repeated then this will be capable of choosing the uh, or uh, generating the whole uh, honeycomb lattice the interesting thing is that in this case in this primitive cell there are two lattice points now you will say oh earlier we told that okay uh, primitive cell is the one in which we have only one lattice point now we are choosing a primitive cell with two lattice points but that earlier definition that a primitive cell is the one having only one lattice point belongs to brevis lattices now since this is not a brevis lattice so we are saying okay these are two lattice points per primitive cell so in brevis lattices a primitive cell will be the one having only one lattice point fine in this case it is having more than one that is okay i mean that is valid or we can say if we take the brevis lattice of honeycomb lattice so this is your honeycomb lattice this is the brevis lattice for the honeycomb lattice if i take the primitive cell for this brevis lattice of your honeycomb lattice then that effectively will contain only one lattice point so i hope the whole story is clear to you and you are not confused so this is what is the important difference between brevis lattice and honeycomb lattice so that is how we have chosen here so this is your honeycomb this is your sorry this is your brevis lattice 2d hexagonal lattice if, if i choose this in this pattern so this whole is taken as to be the unit cell like this and in each unit cell if you place the points you may assume them to be carbon atoms to so say say how to get from 2d hexagonal lattice a uh, graphene structure so this is the brevis lattice for graphene structure you are placing two atom uh, relevant to each lattice point and uh, the two carbon atoms placed in uh, corresponding to each lattice point in this way and when they are repeated you will get the whole uh, honeycomb lattice i hope that is uh, clear to you uh, and uh, i would like you actually to go back and uh, 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 screen is not visible is it so is the screen visible somebody wrote a message that screen is not visible uh, did this happen again okay maybe this is an older message that's okay fine okay then harish is asking a question why we need brevis lattice is it more fundamental um okay uh, why we need brevis lattice is because uh, uh, that brevis lattice tells you structure is exhibiting so brevis lattices of course have a, a very important role in description of the periodic structures of course we can say it is uh, more fundamental and it has um, more symmetry uh, uh, elements i would say and uh, uh, as you know that there are only 14 possibilities for brevis lattices so you can't have more than 14 so try to imagine any periodic structure existing in nature and that is possible uh it is possible to describe that periodic structure only in terms of uh, any one of those 14 brevis lattices so this is of course a very good simplification of uh, the whole vast things which exist in nature yes any other question <clears throat> why we call non primitive cell as conventional because people prefer to take them maybe because of their symmetry or uh, mathematical convenience if you write down the lattice vectors for a uh, primitive cell of uh, bcc then those will look like, like a little complicated if we simply say okay let me not take the whole cube uh, i mean sorry let me not take the primitive one but uh, take a simple cubic lattice vector okay this is where the answer is okay if we take let's say bcc case 
if I say, okay, let me not choose these lattice vectors, rather let me choose these vectors. Yes, I can do that. But in that case, corresponding to each lattice point, I should have two lattice points effectively. Now, uh, this is a little tricky statement. I mean, I am generating one lattice with the help of these vectors. And then I'm saying, okay, each lattice point here is actually equivalent to two. One is sitting at 0, 0, 0, say this one. Other one is sitting at half, half, half. So corresponding to each lattice point here, there is another lattice point which is sitting at half, half, half. So if you take that rule, yes, you can generate the whole thing. And in that case, I mean, conventionally, you will be having this simple lattice vectors. But now you will be having effectively two lattice points for each lattice point here or as per this rule. So conventional means they have uh, more symmetry elements, uh, probably convenient to deal mathematically, something like this. I hope, yes, that's okay. Is it okay, Vivek? Any other question? Okay, any other question? I think we are running out of time. So uh, questions, uh, let us, uh, I'll take your, your questions tomorrow, if any. Uh, by then you carefully read the uh, this Ashcroft Marmin and try to see the difference between uh, this one, what you say, honeycomb lattice and uh, hexagonal lattice yourself. Try to convince your mind yourself that, okay, that is, uh, or how the things are happening. So that will make you more comfortable in this. So with this, uh, let us stop for today. Uh, next class, I think we have on a Monday. So we will meet on Monday. You have sufficient time to clear all these things yourself. So please do read. You have a three day long weekend. Read all these things yourself so that once you do them properly, you will understand them forever. Fine. Have a good day. See you on Monday. Thank mm -hmm. you.